Well, here I am with some good friends that I've met a couple of months ago. Don't live too far from you guys. Uh, Mervy and Kimo, thanks very much for taking the time to have a chat today. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Jason. Now, this is our second time around. We uh, did an interview a couple of days ago and we had some technical issues. So here we go again. So apologies for that. I'll no problem. The no weather was <laughs> a bit better. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> now we see the short of reality in Paraguay. See. So it can be yeah, cold. It's, it's not always that warm. <laughs> no, no. And people will be um, quite surprised to learn that we are in Paraguay because it looks more like we're in Finland at the moment. <laughs> yeah, it's almost as cold as in Finland. Of course, the weather is like in Finland during the summer now. So see. we have about uh, 16, 17 uh, uh, Celsius here, and, but it feels even colder. So. Because it's cold inside. See, see. Yeah. Yeah. So I just wanted to catch up and have a chat because we're doing a video series. I think we've spoken to you about it. Uh, property in Paraguay, just getting around talking to people who have had experience with building or buying properties or looking for properties in any way related to the issue of property in Paraguay. And you guys have been through the system, you've purchased land and you're in the process of building. So can I just firstly ask, how long have you been in Paraguay for? We have been here for about 15 months now. Yeah, one year and five yeah. months. And in that time, you've purchased land and you're in the process of building? Yes, we purchased land, but we lived in different uh, locations in Paraguay in order for us to know where we want to live uh, or settle down in the future. And uh, we lived in one city called Caguasu, then uh, in one place called Vieta, south of Asuncion, and then um, a couple of months near Asuncion in these uh, suburbs, Fernando de la Mora and Luque. And then we decided to come to Kakupe, and uh, we like this area. This uh, it's a bit m many hills over here, and uh, and then we decided seriously uh, buy land here, and and then later on decided also that we want to stay <coughs> here for a longer time, and uh, build a house on that. Mm -hmm. uh, Actually, we were first looking for a house too, and we found one, but it was it was not suitable for us. And what, what I have been saying that was quite funny, we went to the broker for the first time and said, yeah, yeah, we are getting slowly to look for a place here. And then a couple of weeks later, we were signing the papers. So oh, <laughs> wow. it wasn't so slowly. Yeah, but when you, when you find the right place, then just go for it. Yeah, because you haven't mucked around. I mean, you know, a year and five months. It may sound like a lot of time, but mm. at the at the same time, when you've purchased a property and you're well advanced in building, that's really a good rate of knots compared to a lot of people. We've mm. been here for over nine months and we're still, you know, in the process of looking for property. So congratulations for getting a gallop on. Mm. Well, thanks. thanks. Um, there are also people who, uh, uh, right away after they came to the country, so bought land and uh, started yeah. building. <laughs> so it's a bit but actually, we, we did it. Yeah, we did it in, in nine months too, because we came here at the end of December, and then in September we started looking for a place. See. Yeah. And you purchased your land through a broker. Yeah. 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 You might kind of, uh, might uh, have. Uh, Find land cheaper if you are not having the broker, so you might uh, hire a local Paraguayan asking land here and then make a, make a contract without the broker, so uh, yeah. it might be possible. But in our case, we found this uh, at, uh, land which we found, uh, or we found this land which we saw together with the broker, ideal for us, and they, then we thought that no, we don't need to uh, look for land anymore. So mm. this is the perfect place for us. And uh, I think it's a, like a, a, with a house, when you are looking for a house or um, apartment, so you go through different alternatives. And in one, at one occasion, you realize that this particular apartment is mine. Yeah. This, uh, no matter it, whether it's a bit uh, more expensive than the others, but you feel it. So yeah, there's this kind of, famous yeah. click. Yeah, yeah. Well, we we say that we don't think that we're going to find the property. The property's going to find us. Mm -hmm. Now I know that might sound a bit woo woo, but we really feel that that we're yeah. still waiting for that perfect yeah. match. Yeah. 
So you guys yeah. found it, and that's yeah. great. Yeah, and also afterwards we noticed that oh, this has this good, good thing, and this is good, and this is good, and so it was. At, at the beginning we thought that okay, this is this is good place, but it's even better that we first thought. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That, that's what you want. Mm. And actually, before we came to Paraguay, uh, our goal was to at least buy land, so just for 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 the future. So. Even though we would have left Paraguay, we would have had some land here. So uh, it's just a kind of uh, plan B or something like that for the future. So Yeah, because the land yeah. doesn't run away. Yeah. No. It's always there. Yeah. And without uh, going to specific details, we're somewhere in between Kakupe and the Tierra, mm -hmm. which is a really sweet spot in our mm -hmm. view. We think that's... Yeah. That's a really and lovely area. you can get area. the benefits of Kakupe and Atira. Yeah. <laughs> and also the distance to Asuncion is not too far. So yeah. one hour, one, one hour, one and a half hour you are in Asuncion or in San Lorenzo. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. And how much land do you have approximately? Yeah, we have four hectares at the moment. Yeah, it's a good size. Yeah, it's a good size. Uh, we were actually in the beginning to looking for the uh, uh, lots with one hectare but it was difficult to find such lots so uh, then then we were kind of forced to buy these four <laughs> four <laughs> hectares <laughs> and uh, so that okay we buy four hectares and later on we sell uh, rest um, two or three hectares to somebody else so that we don't need yeah. yeah and you did very well to buy in a area that doesn't have a lot of lotification a lot of cookie cutter sized pieces of land that they've divided up and that's often an issue around here that you buy a piece of land like this and you've got a whole lot of sections that have been sold off waiting to be turned into mm -hmm. weekenders or something like that yeah and it's a difficult so if you if you have this uh, buy your land in such a, a section so you don't know what kind of neighbors you have so in the future so the uh, paraguayans like a loud music so uh, I, I, we have nothing against Paraguayans themselves, but uh, it's nice to be <laughs> in an area where the music is really 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 not that really high. high. So. <laughs> and the fact that you've got a reasonable sized piece of land, you've been able to choose the, the area that you're building on that probably best suits you in mm. terms of your relationship to neighbours and things. You haven't had to build right next mm. to them, which yeah. is a real feature of yeah. buying a bigger bit of land. Exactly, so you can uh, choose the uh, place where you build your house and uh, so that it's not too close to the neighbors. Mm. Even though this land which we bought, uh, there, are, uh, uh, there are plenty of spots where you can build your house. So it's yeah, it nice was actually spots, a yeah. bit hard to decide where to build because we thought, okay, you, we, we could have chosen at least three places. And it's, you, you, can, you can chase everything else, but where you have your house, it's then there. You yeah. change it. You yeah. change it afterwards. No. No. And your your site is really beautiful. Yeah. It's yeah. A, such a lovely spot that you've chosen to build there. It's got a lovely vista and so congratulations for what you've found. It's quite special. And in terms of your building experience, we've been to the site. Uh, your, your building is clearly a superior construction to what I've seen you know a lot of situations so you found a really good builder here how did you come across him it was together with our friends uh, so since we have been living in different areas here so we have learned to know some people here also in paraguay so and uh, we learned to know one german couple in uh, in vieta and to uh, their contra uh, contacts we found this uh, construction company which is uh, doing uh, houses for the europeans here since uh, Paraguayans, they are not, uh, they, uh, Paraguayan, typical Paraguayan houses do not have uh, such a nice foundation and uh, the humidity is then coming <laughs> to the uh, uh, inside of the house and as we are also, we are now living actually in a typical Paraguayan house and we have this humidity problem here, sí. but uh, these construction companies who are used to the requirements of the Europeans, they, can, uh, they understand the need to have a really solid fountain. Uh, yep. in the houses and uh, it's of course a bit uh, more expensive but it's worth to invest definitely uh, yeah mm -hmm. yeah and yours is double skin double brick yeah. walls yeah. 
Yeah, oh, that's true. Actually, we we had four constructions from whom we asked a, a um, offer. O- offer. Two of them were Germans, and two of them were Paraguayans. The Germans were pretty slow to to give an offer, and I think they have hands full otherwhere. And then uh, the other Paraguayan said that we can do that, and then we had Antonio left and. I have been really, really happy with him and his his work and his people. And did you find much variance in price, the quoted price? No, there are uh, uh, some variance. It's it's more or less uh, the same prices, and uh, but it depends uh, if you have these double bricks in your uh, walls mm-hmm. in the house, and uh, then it uh, the price is getting uh, more expensive. Of course. And. Uh, um, but uh, you can also uh, usually, uh, to our understanding, it's so that uh, uh, if you buy the package price, so per square meter, uh, there's the price defined in the contract. So these prices are a bit uh, uh, higher than if you would do it by yourself, uh, looking for the materials by yourself and mm. having uh, somebody supervising the, uh, the construction site. Maybe you can say they'll uh, even quite substantial, substantial amount of money, but you need to know what you are doing. So, yeah. And uh, I would say that once, if you have experience for uh, of building the house and you have been here for a while, so it might be worth to see this alternative and uh, try to do it by yourself uh, as much as you can. Yeah. At least uh, organizing the materials and, and yeah. so on. If we di- if we did it now, we would be a lot wiser. Yeah. Because not every every place where you can buy materials are on internet. No. You just have to know them, or, or walk or drive by and say, that, oh, here is some place selling this or that. Yeah, yeah, and you guys have made some really good decisions, particularly about your roof structure. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, traditionally here it's uh, terracotta tiles mm-hmm. and timber you you guys have gone with um, metal mm-hmm. yeah, beams it's choppers. Uh, uh, yeah, was it choppers yeah. 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 Mm. so it's kind of it's uh, heavily raining in Paraguay and in that sense it's it's really important that you have a good roof See. And, uh, so we have experience here in Paraguay this uh, uh, bricks <laughs> in, on the roof, in. <laughs> and it's not so yeah. nice experience if your uh, roof is really uh, or water is coming through. Yeah, yeah. But rain. the metal, metal, metal is not so nice from inside. Mm. So they are now making us a wood paneling oh, okay. under it because it, from my opinion, it looked pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, that'll look good. Yeah, because now, for example, we have wood here. It looks nice because it's not so symmetrical. Yeah. But metal is really straight yeah, yeah 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 and what's the schedule like from the time that you've started building to the time that you expect to be in how long would well, that have taken? usually it, it depends uh, a lot uh, uh, of the size of the house and uh, uh, what kind of special requirements you have and if it's so, raining a lot or not yeah mm-hmm. so basically for the smaller houses in paraguay you can have the house readily made already within three months so if we have maybe 40 square meters, 50 square meters, uh, we have 70 square meters plus uh, 30 square meters on the terrace. And uh, it, uh, our construction company started the work in January and we expect to move into the house now at the end of May. So five, six months. That's good. Yeah, that's good. So. They gave in the contract we have 220 days, so basically a little bit about six months. Mm-hmm. But and this know. wood paneling is is making three more three more weeks. Okay. They mm. they have to really make it as a hand. Yeah. Mm. So the good thing in Paraguay is also that once uh, during the construction phase, when you have some additional requirements, you realize that you want to have something more improvements and so on so the constructions are, uh, construction guys are quite flexible in this sense yeah so you've, you're having a, a good experience by the sound of it when you first got here did you consider pre-existing buildings did you look at houses here and mm-hmm. consider buying something that was already built we we looked at one and it had a really nice garden with all possible 
fruit trees and so on. But the uh, room order was so impossible. Ah. Just thought, oh, this, it doesn't work. <clears throat> but um, about the time, um, where you really save time here is that you don't need any permissions from the authorities. Mm. So if you want to build a Dutch Mahal, then you build a Dutch mm. Mahal. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I think uh, in Paraguay you can find nice, uh, uh, nice houses with sure, a nice, yeah. uh, nice uh, land. Especially now, uh, because uh, during the COVID, uh, plenty of Germans moved to uh, Paraguay, and some people bought a ho- uh, built houses here, and then realized that Paraguay is nothing for us, and they want to get out of here, or they want to get rid of their uh, their nice house and uh, and um, lot. So you might find some good deals here. So if you uh, if you have time to see those uh, uh, houses and uh, and so maybe you can negotiate the price down. That's my my mm-hmm. personal tip for a person who doesn't want to buy uh, uh, land and then start building. But you can find good quality houses here. Mm-hmm. So uh, and, uh, yeah, and then in just Hawaii negotiate the prices down. down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, as you say, it takes time, doesn't it? You have to come here and be prepared to sift through. It's not as easy to find viable properties here than what it would be perhaps no. in a lot of places uh, because the thing that we find is that there aren't a lot of active agents here. There are some good agents, but a lot of them are hard, very difficult to contact and to mm-hmm. get them to work the way that you'd like, and so it can take more time. than Yeah, and... The- then it's also that what kind of neighbors you want to have. So it's also good to learn to know the people here and you might have an idea so that you want to settle down somewhere where you have nice neighbors and so on. So it's a kind of thing, yeah. So, so we, are, we are pretty happy with this house, even though it's quite basic with cold water in the shower and <laughs> no, no proper kitchen. But all the Paraguayan neighbors are here near. Almost all of them are relatives with each other. So we got to get to know them, they get to know us, and they are really nice people. So, And our construction site is really, really near. And you guys have got a really healthy attitude when it comes to the way that you've come here, because I do see people move here with a bit of a silo approach. They go and buy a property, first thing they do is put a big wall around it, mm. maybe <laughs> hire one or two yeah. people just to do some yard work, and apart from that, don't talk to anyone. It's a kind of, um, I would say that it's a kind of uh, uh, invitations for uh, invitation for uh, outsiders to come <laughs> come and see what kind of stuff I have at home. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. I have big walls. I have a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. It, uh, it's a kind of I, I don't really like this this kind of attitude. So it's a kind of really risky thing here. So you're somewhere in the pampa on the countryside and you have nice walls and so on. So yeah. it's really attracting attention uh, from mm. uh, certain people. I think that Paraguay is a safe country, but there are some, some issues here also. And uh, especially when the people know that you have money uh, in your house. So it's a kind of uh, risk that you get some visitors. Mm. So a really good security policy is to have Good relationships with your neighbors, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, dogs, and yeah. maybe some yeah. cameras too. So we are going to have our security cameras uh, at anyway in our uh, our house, and uh, but the dog must be uh, per- uh, acquired, and uh, but also it it would be good. Uh, now we are a bit uh, uh, separate from the uh, Paraguayan neighbors, and if we get. Uh, yeah, for the neighbors in the future, so we plan to do some kind of arrangement that uh, everybody, everybody is following each other. So if somebody is not at home, so uh, neighbors are watching. So just in relation to that, you've got four hectares. You've uh, chosen a lovely spot on your land to, to build and you've got your area around there, but you're looking to maybe sell some of that off. How many other houses or, or groups of people would you expect to maybe buy in, into your property? Uh, we expect uh, to sell two, three hectares uh, in the lots of maybe five, uh, half a hectare or uh, smaller uh, lots and we expect maybe three or four neighbors then 
that would be the idea. If somebody wants yeah. to come. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm sure good, they will. Yeah. So it's a, but we are not actively marketing. So it's a kind of, uh, first yeah. we need to uh, uh, decide what, how the lots are going to look like. Mm, it takes time, maybe for one year before we yeah. have yeah, the we lots need to have and some the paper, titles. Paperwork. Yeah. 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 Since the titles are uh, really ex- important. Uh, important. So, uh, so don't buy land in Paraguay without having a title. No. So there are plenty of yeah. stories about this. And yeah. So. yeah. Yeah. Then you really know that uh, the land is good and it belongs to the seller and and all other things. Yeah. 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 And you guys uh, navigated that process okay. You used a good solicitor mm-hmm. and. Yeah. yeah. We we made the, everything through our broker, so he yeah. he's uh, he knows the area, has the contacts, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, so we organized everything. So we make made first advance payment, and uh, uh, this gave us uh, an access to the lot, and the advance payment was about ten percent, and then. Uh, three months later, once we had the title uh, uh, transfer, transferred to our name, so the whole uh, land was officer ours. Ah. And uh, what a lot of people ask us about is the issue of paying for property, transferring funds from foreign account and so forth. Was that much of a hassle for you guys? That was a bit, uh, I, I would say that um, uh, it was possible to do it uh, as a bank transfer. Yeah. And uh, we made the, actually when we uh, bought the land, we made the advance payment with check, so that was possible. So we transferred money uh, from Europe to uh, one cooperativa here in in uh, uh, Paraguay, and they issued the check, which we then handed over to the seller. That was fine, but uh, a large chunk of the purchase price was uh, uh, paid via via bank transfer. See. And in this particular case, uh, uh, we had a trust with the seller that everything is fine. And we transferred the money before we got this uh, uh, title, so one day before. And then once the, uh, this um, seller had it, uh, had it uh, on the bank account, so we may, uh, signed the papers and everything was fine. So we took the risk there. So, uh, so you really need to be uh, see that uh, case by case, mm. what kind of risk you are having there. But you, you uh, the easy, easier way is even better is if you want to dec- uh, minimize the risks. You transfer the money to Paraguay. You take cash with you to Paraguay, and then you make the uh, payment of the land. Mm-hmm. So it's a kind of. Hundred percent secure. So mm. We were willing to take this risk since we know uh, already got to know these people who uh, sold the land to us. Mm. But it's it goes to the other other direction too. So when we we had the closing, uh, the Paraguayos, the, the sellers, when came came to the meeting with the lawyer, because they also had some trust issues with us. If they sign the paper, are they going to get the money and so on? Mm. So mm. so often we, we foreigners think that our Paraguayos, can we really trust them? But they think that too, mm. if, mm. if they can trust us because they don't know us and we can be whatever criminals who come here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, everyone's still finding their way dealing yeah. with these things, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. Otherwise, it, it, uh, then when, once we started uh, building the house, so we had, um, there are different kinds of uh, contracts uh, uh, that usually the Paraguayan companies, they want to have this advance payment for the materials. Since they don't have that much money on their bank account for the working capital purposes and so on. So we paid 40% of the uh, house price to our uh, construction guy uh, and then in the middle of the construction time, we pay, uh, paid the uh, 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 rest of the uh, funds. So uh, it's a kind of, there you have also risks here. So you need to really have a kind of company which is trust, trustworthy and has a good reputation. And uh, I think if, if you uh, do this, uh, build a house with the Germans, uh, so it's a bit easier to sell uh, for later uh, the, uh, this purchase or this uh, um, price 
to the construction companies, so they they have the more funds to uh, fund uh, this construction and uh, are not really depending on uh, on your money to start the uh, work. But I, I guess in your case, it sounds like you've struck a good balance of a Paraguayan builder that understands the standards that you want, mm. but you're still dealing with a Paraguayan, which is kind of nice too, isn't it? Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's a yeah, language it's. course. <laughs> but it's uh, important that he had a good reputation. So Absolutely. If you don't know the construction company, so I would, wouldn't advise you to make like uh, these payments like we did. No. Mm. So it's no go. Mm. So it's okay. And we also, beforehand, we also visited one construction site uh, in, in other places of Paraguay where the same company is building and we asked their experiences and recommendations and so on. Perfect. And it's, mm. it's a couple architect couple so i th- we thought that okay we can trust them also so when they say that antonio is good then we know that he is good that's great yeah. and in terms of ongoing communication with your builder i understand you've had a number of conversations with him some of those have been quite sort of animated maybe there's been nervous moments throughout the build but it sounds like you've been able to work your way through all that he's been really attentive by the sounds mm-hmm. of it yeah uh, he, he has uh, considered our worries always and uh, yeah. explained also if we have had some uh, some issues uh, with the uh, construction uh, uh, manners, uh, how they are doing the things. So it's a, yeah. it has been a good communication yeah, anyway. Yeah, so. I'm, I'm surprised how patient he really has been. Mm. <laughs> because sometimes it happens that, that somebody comes to the construction site, a uh, foreigner or something, and gives us some warnings or, or worries, and then we are panicking and we run to Antonio, oh, help, help, what is happening here? And then he very calmly and patiently explains why he is doing and what he is doing, and don't worry, yeah. tranquilo. Mm. <laughs> but I would say that it's important that you uh, once you start building the house, so it's always too good to have somebody uh, who has experience with building a house in Paraguay, to just to take a look at the construction site in the beginning, so that uh, uh, yeah, that uh, you don't have any any uh, doubts or so. So it gives you some uh, some uh, secure uh, secured feeling that everything is going to be fine. And not so, not only in the beginning, but through through the whole process, you have to be there and watch, mm-hmm. because sometimes you have an idea that I want this thing to be here. But they put it here. Yeah. For example, tiles can be something else that you think or, or something. So you really have to go there every day and watch. Yeah. Because they, they are Paraguayans and we are foreigners. Yeah. So my and especially when we are from Finland, our our way of thinking is already different from from yeah. uh, USA people or from Germans or whatever. So. You definitely realise the cultural differences yeah, when you're doing yeah. any business with Par- in Paraguay. Yeah, yeah. A, an example of that was we had our car repaired recently and we had discussed some other issue with the car just in passing yeah. that we said, oh, well, that's something that we might sort of deal with at some stage. And then we got the car back for the repair that we thought we were getting, which he did, but he also <laughs> did the other thing mm. and charged us for it. Uh, although we hadn't really made a decision to do that thing, so you've got to be really certain about the discussions mm. that you have. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Or uh, they, uh, they, uh, Paraguayans usually uh, prefer to buy the cheapest item. Oh, okay. And or um, not buying such items at all. And one good example in our case was that one, once we had um, fixed the water to the uh, to the house. Uh, uh, we uh, noticed that in our water tank was a uh, uh, frog. Uh, frog. Frog. Ah. Yeah, frog. Yeah. yeah. There was in the water Big tank one. was a frog, <laughs> a small frog, <laughs> and this water is uh, uh, is going to come to our house as a drinking water. <laughs> so ah. it's not so nice experience. And this guy who was doing this uh, uh, these tubes and so on, so. Then he told us that, yeah, you can have a filter, yes. <laughs> and he uh, uh, installed one filter there into the uh, tank. And then he later on came to us, do we want to have also a filter from the tank to the house? Of course we want to have that. So we have now two filters, one, one uh, from the 
well to the tank and another one from the tank to the uh, house so if mm. something would happen that there is a frog again in the tank and but, was it also but they, yeah. they think that yeah it's not so important mm. so you can live without the filter so mm. it's coming and so on but but uh, you re really uh, really need to be careful and see that and it's also basically in uh, in Paraguay a situation that the people tend to buy the cheapest parts and then they go broke so it's better to buy originals if you want to have good yeah, really quality. good so one you need to be careful that you don't pay, uh, buy the cheapest one which is really in, in a couple of months broke again and and uh, you, you raise a good point about when you build there's actually other experts involved in a build plumbers and electricians mm -hmm. in particular. Yeah. Did your builder source those tradesmen for you? Or do you have an understanding of their history? Have you checked them out? Uh, uh, we didn't check them out. So the, our construction company, they uh, organized all these, uh, these plumbers and uh, electricians and- uh, Carpenters. And, yeah. So mm. it was basically the package. And also we needed to make a uh, small, uh, small road to the uh, construction site in the beginning so they organized that also uh, cleaned up uh, the construction site or the, from the trees and bushes and so so they have actually done everything so uh, so they know how it works here so well given the standard that your builder is adhering to i imagine that he'll be using similarly skilled tradesmen for those other things so that's a good assurance that mm. that you've had someone like your builder to mm. select some better tradesmen than perhaps sometimes you can get because things like plumbing and elect electrical work, that's something that can really sneak up on you in Paraguay, isn't it? Mm. Because there's no real clear cut standards. Mm. Yeah. And our constructor gives us a one year currency. So when he has chosen the people, then he can be responsible for the work. If he, if when, when he chooses the plumber, and then the water system goes broke, it's, it's his responsibility to repair it. But yeah. It, yeah. yeah, the guarantees are quite unusual in Paraguay, at least among the Paraguayan companies. So, uh, so if you choose the German company here, so you might have five years guarantee or even 10 years guarantee. So, um, so once you make this request, for proposal to the different companies, so you can also consider this one, so uh, whether it's important for you or not. So you've got a year guarantee uh, on your... Yeah, yeah. But That's you can give it, uh, uh, get a bigger, a longer one too, so if you want. But we, uh, we thought that one year it, uh, is enough for us at this point of time, and, uh, and uh, we probably are going, are going to experience the biggest problems in the beginning. Are you on a shared water supply? Uh, it's, uh, this village has a, uh, a shared well and we have the connection to this well and uh, our house a bit, is a bit uh, higher than the village itself so we use the motors to get the uh, uh, water to the house but in the future we might have our own well so it's not that expensive here uh, to my knowledge to have it so uh, just in case so uh, especially if we are going to have a pool in the future so then then it's mm. important. Yeah, we, we don't own. want to yeah. empty the whole well of the village and then all the other people don't have any water when we are swimming yeah. in our own pool. That wouldn't <laughs> go down well. Yeah. So there are people having their, uh, their animals here and they need also water. And so if we are having a big pool or something, so, so <laughs> it's better uh, to have our own well. And, and you also ran your electricity supply up to your mm -hmm. land. Yeah. Yeah. And you had to put in poles and infrastructure? Yeah, yeah. so it was uh, organized by this electrician uh, who is doing also the electricity work for our, uh, our house. Mm. Mm. So they organized everything, so uh, together with Ande, uh, and put the poles and so on. So yeah. And the poles and are now our property. Oh, good. So yeah. if you want to sell them later, then we can do that. See. <laughs> And then the next step is now to get the internet uh, internet connection. So mm. uh, so it's this um, this uh, glass yeah, okay. fiber uh, connection. So which we are going to install there. So in a couple of weeks. Yeah. And is that single phase or three phase power? 
we have single phase. Flow. Okay. So the three phase is optimal here in the area, but uh, in this area they are using this single phase. And single phase is sufficient to run a house and. You need to have uh, this uh, kind of um, uh, this. Um, I can't remember this uh, big uh, thing that which is giving you more power. Uh, this uh, 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 separator or something like that. Divider. So the, or divider, or yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is giving you more power. So then, so you are not having this uh, um, uh, small power. Uh, power source in the, uh, for your house, so you mm. can have them more. And of course we need to think about solar power or some other replacement if there is a power shortage. Because yeah. when it's raining heavily or something else happens, then we have some breaks. So would you have a generator, you think, or something like that? Or? Uh, it's a, uh, we, we are thinking about a diesel generator in the beginning, but uh, then in the future, probably we are going to have uh, batteries, uh, really good batteries, so we can store the, uh, electricity there for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. So it's more expensive, but it, it's, it doesn't take much place in your house. And then the solar panels in the future. So, uh, so uh, we have these future plans there. But Same. But a generator for at the first time it's it's fine, but uh, I I would prefer even these uh, batteries so um, so they are not so loud. So. Have you looked into solar here in Paraguay? Not yet, not yet. So it's a, mm. but it shouldn't be that expensive. So mm. otherwise you can order mm. from uh, mm. from overseas. And you have a lot of sun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not now, but in the all other. Because power is so cheap here, as you say, some people just opt to use the power, charge their batteries on the power, and when it goes out, you've yeah. got battery power. Yeah, but the electricity in general is cheap. Mm. Yeah, so so uh, that is why probably that people are not having solar panels here. But, uh, yeah. But it's, it's a good backup plan in the future. You, you're intending to have a pool. That, that'll be nice. I think every house in Paraguay should have a pool. Have you made any inquiries about what sort of pool you're going to um, we have made some uh, some uh, we have had some contacts with uh, with the pool uh, constructors and um, and we have also met people who have built the, uh, uh, pools here in their gardens and uh, it's important it's important that you find the right person who is doing this and has experience and has quality yes so have even has even quality guarantee yeah. And um, we know one example that one, one guy uh, let one construction company build a pool for himself. Uh, this oh, construction see. company claimed that they had 17 nope. years experience. <laughs> but after half a year, um, this guy who wanted to have this pool, so he needed to rebuild it. Mm. And he didn't have any contact anymore with this construction company. So they didn't reply to his messages and so on. So uh, it's better to maybe to pay more and have a then a good quality uh, and a good reputation, uh, a company with a good reputation yeah. to build your pool. It's not the first time we've heard that story. Pools and things like electric gates, mm -hmm. those sort of things you can often find people that will come out, take your money, maybe do yeah. a bit of work and then not finish the job. Yeah, they know, <laughs> they know everything here. So they, mm. well, they are people who, are, who don't have any profession, but they know how to do it. <laughs> they, you know. of, course, of course, building a bigger pool is a really challenge because the sand is pretty, pretty loose. So when it's raining, the sand just goes like that. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they say that the maximum maximum length for a pool is 16 meters. Okay. Or something. 22 might be possible, but it's really ex really expensive and really hard to make. It is something that you really need to think about. They're the sort of add-ons that, if you're not really thinking, they're the sort of things that could sneak up on you and mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. bite you on the... Yeah. But in terms of mistakes, yeah. your experience has been really positive. In retrospect, is there anything that you would advise somebody who's thinking about going on the building adventure in Paraguay? Is there something that you've learnt or that you wish you had have done better or differently? Well, now when I'm thinking about it, we made, uh, we made the plan more or less ourselves. 
we got some help from the Paraguayan architect. But I think that for the for the windows and doors and and electrical plans and so on, it would have been wise to have some professional help. But it, it's okay, and I think it's going to function fine how we made it. But I had some insecurities. And of course, here you can change things. Like, for example, we had, we had um, decided that the size of the window is going to be this and that, and the height is that. And then we noticed uh, when the construction was going on that, oh, it's <laughs> it doesn't work, work that way. So we said that, OK, please add one more layer of bricks there. <laughs> and they just did it. So, I think in, in Western countries that would be quite yeah. unusual <laughs> yeah. just right. to decide in between, oh. <laughs> that would be a big hassle. You'd yeah. have to yeah. contact the authority yeah. and see if you're yeah. allowed to do yeah. that. Yeah. 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 What I, I would do it uh, in another way now, so I would actually uh, uh, fix the well uh, uh, right in the beginning on the uh, terrain. and we. We decided uh, to uh, use this common well here, and it was not that cheap actually to build a 300 meters pipe to the uh, house. And uh, uh, when I compare this price uh, with uh, having an own well, so the difference is a bit, a uh, couple of thousands of euros more having your own well. So it would have been worth uh, to have that instead of uh, using the common well. But now we have the pipeline there and uh, we need to just accept this small mistake. Yeah, but I guess I guess it's made good relations with the community. Yeah, it is. Mm. We know the people now and um, uh, might be so that we need to put the well, uh, their well on our land sometime in the future. So we have uh, in a, a small spot of land for them. So since they have some problems with the water pressure here, yeah. The well is too low here, so and we uh, we have our terrain a bit higher than the village itself, so it helps them. Um, it's a good good point anyway, so that uh, they know that we try to be good members of the village. Mm. And just in regards to your move to Paraguay, how are you feeling about the country? How are you feeling about the move that you've made? Has it been something that you've ever thought twice about or is it is it just better than what you thought? Um, it's a good question. Uh, Paraguay is not Thailand or it's not uh, Brazilian uh, beaches and uh, so before I came here so I didn't have any kind of uh, uh, feeling that now Paraguay to paradise and uh, uh, so I was that was quite good actually, so I didn't have any bigger expectations and I like to be here and people are nice and uh, I like the sky in Paraguay, it's green here, there's no uh, no sea here, but it's it's a kind of, I feel myself good here, so it's a, uh, I don't have such a feeling that I want to go back to Europe or so, but uh, it's, it's good that if you don't have these uh, uh, expectations in the beginning that you are going to come into paradise. Mm. So then you you are just a kind of okay. This is another place where you are just living. Or it depends. Yeah. What is your paradise? Mm. Yeah. So people are really really friendly, and and I like it's it's developing country. So you have this nice atmosphere. It's all the time something is going on and people are building and and you you see the development and how it goes further, and that's why I think people are also quite excited and and alive and especially when I compare to Europe where we came from the atmosphere was pretty tense there and only when you come here you realize that oh <laughs> it, it's it's been really tough so when we came here to apply for the cedula it took four days to from me to to relax and to notice that oh <laughs> it's it's quite okay here because I had been so so uh, tense in Germany. We, we lived in Germany for 11 years, even though we have been. And it really is like you've slipped through a wormhole coming to Paraguay in terms of the the sentiment, the feeling. As you say, it's a very positive vibe yeah. here generally. Yeah. 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 It's a young, young country. People, yeah. 
young people. So it's a big difference when you go to Europe or I don't know about Australia, but uh, you see this uh, demographics uh, in Europe. <laughs> Europe is getting older, having also ethnical problems in the future. So, so here it's a quite homogenic population and young, a lot of young people. So it's a yeah, the big biggest biggest yeah. age group is people from zero to four. It's a young country, isn't it? It's really lovely. Yeah, a lot of children. I think that Paraguay has really benefited from people like yourself coming because you're awesome. We really appreciate our friendship that we've made with you guys over a relatively short space of time, but we look forward to spending much more time with you guys, yeah. particularly yeah, once you get too. your pool. You won't be able to get rid of us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It takes a while anyway, so, so we need to survive without a pool for over one year anyway. So, but uh, it's yeah. in the plans. It's yeah. better to take asa- uh, eat asado and so on uh, yeah. in the next month <laughs> once we leave there. And once you are in a position where you're ready to maybe think about dividing off some land, I'm sure people that would be watching this video, would their ears would prick up about the possibilities there so we can find a way for people to make contact with us or mm-hmm. we can leave a contact number for you guys. Yeah, that's, that's a fine and uh, people can, before we have any uh, done anything, so people are welcome to visit us and see how we are uh, living here and so on. So if uh, somebody is coming to Paraguay, so please come and uh, pay a visit to us. And what a great advantage to see how you've actually built you've made all those connections and you've you've gone through that path so that's really a tremendous potential feature for anyone that perhaps might like to buy some land from you or somehow become involved in that because those things are things that you've already done so yeah you've made contact with a good builder and tradesman yeah, we know some builders here, so it kind of uh, can give some tips uh, how to how to proceed. And, mm. uh, and yeah. now we know where you can find materials. So in Paraguay, the g- a good thing is when you are building the house, so that uh, labor is cheap. So it's more or less the materials which are uh, costing you money, and uh, but they are also cheaper than than in Europe, except you uh, if you buy some imported stuff. But uh, that material which is uh, produced in Paraguay is of course cheaper and the labor it's sometimes really nice to ask somebody to ta- work for you so that when you don't need to pay <laughs> that much like uh, back home. Thanks again for uh, taking the time. If anyone's looking to perhaps see how things are progressing, as I say, they can make contact with us or perhaps We'll leave contact details and we can go from there. But yeah, yeah. that's Welcome fine. to Paraguay. So, yeah. Come and visit us <laughs> so then we can talk more. Right. Thanks again and until next time, take care. Okay. Yeah. Ciao. Thanks. See you. Bye.